Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna look at the ratios, see how the ratios are changing. Uh, I'll give you my opinion and we'll dive right in. Uh, what I've got behind me is the CRB index to S&P 500. Uh, we've got monthly candlesticks. Uh, this was the end of the last bull market in commodities. Uh, it was up around eh, 0 0.20 to point or 0.02 to 0.025, and we're scraping the bottom at 0 0.005. Uh, what that means is that we could go up five times in purchasing power, the CRB index against the S&P 500 to get back to the top of the bull market, if it were to, to be the same size. Everything's looking really good. We've got nice big uh, buying pressure and small selling pressure days. Uh, all through here, it looks excellent uh, to continue higher. Zooming in on daily candlesticks. These are daily candlesticks, so each candlestick is a day. Uh, we broke through the downtrend line. We did a little consolidation return move, and now we're breaking here, which means we're in a new uptrend. Now, I know a lot of people, they, they think that when we go into an uptrend, that we're just going to go straight higher. That That doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to go straight up we could have good drawdowns or pullbacks uh, as we go higher but overall the general trend will be uh, upward in my opinion so long that we've got the expansionary phase of real estate uh, and that inflation as a tailwind looking at the platinum to gold ratio zoom out here geez so here's the platinum to gold ratio. Uh, again, everything looks really good and everything's intact. Uh, 2.25, 2.4 uh, could be the top. Two and a half if we can get up there. Uh, remember, this is monthly candlesticks. Everything looks good. Big uh, buying pressure off the bottom. The return move. We are still above the down. We're still above the pattern on this return move. We're putting in a nice, good buying pressure candlestick uh, on a monthly basis. We're diving into the dailies to see what the dailies look like. Uh, so these are daily candlesticks. I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit. I'm gonna throw maybe a, a little down, you know, pattern on here and it looks like we're breaking this, this kind of pattern that's developing. We've got a, a low here and then a higher low and it looks like we're gaining some traction to potentially move higher for the platinum to gold ratio. Uh, and just zooming in here, yeah, we got a little bit of selling pressure this last uh, session, but it looks really good. We got good buying pressure, small selling pressure, and it looks like the that platinum's going to outperform gold by looking at this. The platinum to palladium ratio, uh, zoom on out. We're in this channel going sideways, Palladium's had a pretty good run recently. Uh, this, is, this is getting a little bit of a pullback where Palladium is outperforming Platinum. Now, just because Palladium's outperforming Platinum in the near term doesn't mean that this is going to be sustaining. And maybe Palladium does outperform Platinum for a little while until we hit, maybe we do another uh, retest of this line down here. Maybe, maybe it pulls it all the way back before going heading and heading higher. Zooming on out on the monthly candlesticks, uh, we're down in very good valuations for platinum in relationship to palladium. So I would be a buyer of platinum uh, based off valuations uh, in relationship to palladium. Looking at the platinum to silver ratio, uh, wow, this one looks really good for uh, platinum to outperform silver. So we've got the downtrend line. Uh, we are right at that downtrend line. We're doing a little turtle head. I call it the turtle head. We've got good buying pressure, smaller selling pressure uh, in between. Uh, to me, this looks like platinum's about to outperform silver. Looking at the daily candlesticks, we've got a nice little breakout here of platinum outperforming silver. So the ratio is behaving in a way that favors platinum outperformance. So it looks good. Gold to silver. Uh, gold looks, so this is the dailies, gold is outperforming silver at this very short-term 
um, movement. On the monthly candlesticks, uh, we broke to the downside. We're kind of coming up. And then I think this is going to find some area and then break back down. This is where I think we're going to get our outperformance of platinum. And I said platinum because platinum does very well in an inflationary environment. Uh, silver does as well, but it seems like plat platinum does very well in the beginning. And with the, with the dollar being a little bit, the index at least, being a little bit stronger, uh, perhaps gold falls down less than silver under those conditions. Uh, so we're kind of like in this intermediate, like short-term kind of re retest move before I think the inflationary grip gets, you know, well, I should say the inflation gets the grips on the psychology of people. And money flows will start going, I think, back into silver and gold and, and platinum uh, in greater quantities. The palladium to silver ratio. Uh, yeah, palladium has been a very good outperformer in the very short term. So that's palladium outperforming silver. Uh, let's go to the dailies because that's on the monthlies. And I, I would suspect that we're going to see the same thing. So the dailies, you can see this thing just rocket higher. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Last eight days, uh, palladium's been it's been a beast. It's been a beast. Uh, so that's what it's looked like. Just seeing what the heck. We may come up back up to here and then chug lower. Dow Jones to gold ratio. Stocks to, to gold. So here's the Dow Jones to gold ratio. We've had the breakout lower of the ascending triangle. And then we usually get a return move. And that's what I think is happening. We're going to get a return move upward. And then I think we'll head back down. So that's the Dow Jones Industrial Average to Gold. Uh, we'll back out. And we've got this large uh, megaphone pattern. And I think this will eventually work its way back down to maybe two, one or two. Gold to oil ratio. Uh, we're right at 20. So we are compressing into this lower trend line. Uh, right at 20. And going to the dailies, we're right there. Now, we might pop back up for a little bit where oil relaxes. This oil's been on a tear. I mean, it's been killing it. Uh, but I think this is going to compress all the way down to 10 or below from ludicrous valuations before. And we're, we've been in this valuation channel since 2008. It's been on a slight upwards ascent, and we're very close to breaking to the downside uh, for the gold to oil ratio. That means oil. I think oil is going to outperform gold um, in this bull market. And then looking at the copper to gold ratio, uh, we've been just going sideways for a very long period of time, all the way since February 2021. This ratio has just been tracking sideways. It's indecisive. Uh, usually when the copper to gold ratio go, is going up like this, you get uh, increasing interest rates and the economy is uh, recovering. Right now we're just chopping sideways. Uh, looking at some other metrics, uh, we're going to the, the dollar index. The dollar index has been creeping higher. Uh, we had a little bit of a small day uh, come in last trading session but i think what's happening is we're going to come up we'll do a retest and then we'll i think go go lower on the dollar as the expansionary phase of real estate kicks in that's our credit lending cycle and the majority of credit lending cycle uh comes from re uh, real estate and then looking at the 10-year yield uh, we've got an inverted head and shoulders. We broke that to the upside. Uh, yeah, we have a little bit of selling pressure, or I should say downward pressure on yields, but I still think this is going to ultimately end uh, going to the upside. If someone steps in and does some yield curve control manipulation, because that's what the Federal Reserve does best is manipulation, uh, I think we could get to you know an area up here somewhere. 
and then they're probably going to step in and say, all right, time out. Uh, things are getting out of control on yields because the market can't handle higher interest rates. So that that's a <clears throat> high likelihood. Scrolling on down, I've got some other maybe metrics to, to hit on. Lumber continues to do very well. Put, let me put this on the log. Uh, we've had this breakout, a return move, and another breakout. And this thing's, I mean, it's remaining quite elevated for the price of lumber. We may see this come back down a little bit more as this thing cycles back and forth and cycles and cycles. Uh, we've got nickel. Nickel has broken to the upside of this uh, pattern once the pattern shows up. There it is, broken to the upside, probably do a return move, and then a takeoff. Uh, so that one's looking good. Uh, we've got cocoa that's been chopping sideways. Wheat futures have been on a slight upward trend uh, from a breakout. If we zoom way out for, for wheat, um, we've got this large breakout here of this pattern that's broken and it's, it's moving to the upside. Soybeans, another big pattern breakout. It's been moving on up, so that one looks good. Food's all going higher. Corn futures remaining at a very high elevated price. Uh, this is the global price index of all commodities. And this is the last bull market from 98 all the way till 2008. Then this was a consolidation period. <laughs> One, two, three, and then we've got the breakout to the upside. Uh, and I think what we're doing is we're putting in our first leg. And then we're gonna have a massive, we'll have a little bit of a pullback or sideways motion, and then we're gonna put a massive third leg. First leg, third leg, fifth wave, and then we go into a consolidation period. We're breaking this consolidation period with a first big move. And then we'll probably have a, a nice, very, very big, move in global price index of all commodities this is the ppi the producer price index by commodity this is all commodities we've had we've been on a tear here now i like looking at this from a big long-term perspective whenever you get these consolidation periods they break and then they take off they consolidate they break they consolidate they break they consolidate and they break to the upside and we're in a impulse move higher for the producer price index. So everything is looking fantastic for a continued price increases of all these things. Last bull market in 98, we could have bought here. You still would have had to come back in this drawdown period, but the expansionary phase was continuing to happen. So it can continue to break out. Now, keep in mind, this has been a stimulus driven, I think, first move. So we could have a pullback and eventually the lending from the expansionary phase of real estate is going to have to be what sustains and supports a higher producer price index. So I'm still waiting <clears throat> and seeing, you know, we've got that money coming into the system, but it takes a while to filter through. Uh, and where that comes from <clears throat> is the housing market and the United States housing starts. And we, we are in that expansionary phase, but I don't know what the transition necessarily looks like between stimulus money and this expansionary phase. We could have a little bit of a, a drawdown dip uh, of inflation. But we're in the expansionary phase. I would be long. Um, you know, 98 is right in here. That's where we kind of went into an expansionary phase at the same time that we're right here. And in 98, if you were to look, we still had a little bit of a pullback in 98 to 99, 2000, before heading higher. This is that pullback there. And if you were to look at like any of these charts with overall commodities, like the producer price index, we still had in the last market in 98, it ran up. So we came down, 98, it was down here. It came up and still pulled back a little bit before heading higher. 
Uh, so even you can have pullbacks, and it's not going to be the end of the world. It, it doesn't mean the thesis is wrong. You're still going to have pullbacks. They're still possible. When you have these big impulse surge, pullback, impulse surge, pullback, impulse surge. So uh, just because something's going down for a little bit, like uranium, doesn't mean that the thesis is incorrect. doesn't mean that we have any problems. It's just the market pulling back, which is normal. Uh, Oil has been going up. It's been on a tear. Uh, and that's part of the, the thesis as well, oil going up. But it could have a pullback. I mean, it's been moving up at a pretty strong pace. I'm not saying we're going to have necessarily going to have a pullback at this moment, but we can, and it's not going to mean much. It doesn't mean the thesis is wrong. It doesn't mean that we still don't have inflation. And these things take time. They take months over months over months uh, of a change for that to be a sustainable change and for us to even recognize the change. So someone who says, oh, this is done, and it only they've got like a week's worth of data, it, it doesn't work that fast. This takes many months for this to uh, reverse, unless it's a very sharp sell-off that moves a very long distance. And, and I don't think it's going to happen. That's what I think. But uh, we'll see. If you like the content, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you for listening. This is Finding Value.